On today's on location, I'm here with PJ Vic on the banks of the Oconto River. Just got done putting in, oh, a pretty darn long day on the water. <laughs> it was not your typical spring fishing. We caught great fish. Yeah, awesome fish. But these fish are incredibly lethargic, which is typically not the case on these rivers when you catch a nice run of weather mm -hmm. post spawn. So uh, we caught fish on just about everything we threw at them. There was nothing that was really dominant, right? Yeah. The jigs and plastics, uh, threw a, you know, a couple rip and wrap fish in there, uh, hair jigs and jigs and minnows. You know things are not quite where we want them to be if I'm fishing jig and minnow. <laughs> and I'm, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I, I will fish whatever it takes to catch the fish, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, we, we did have a good run on snap jigging, you know, the paddle tails, but mm -hmm. when that went cold, it, it was dead cold. I agree, you are on oh. the spectrum somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I, I think, and I, I know you agree, that yeah. what's going on here, great weather, super warm, uh, fish have run up out of the bay, up into the river, uh, spawned like mad, right? Water temperatures in the upper 40s to 51 degrees yeah. right now. I think it's the low flow. It is definitely low flow. I mean, th these rivers are the lowest they've been in years for this spring run. So everything's happening real quick. I've spent a quite a bit of time up here and I'm, I'm talking two and three day windows mm -hmm. on, on these river bites uh, up, up, up river and, and they're just running up doing their thing and coming right, right back, back down. down. Well, there's nothing yep. to hold them. I mean, typically you'd see what, two, feet higher water levels right now and a ton more current. Yeah. They're all, they're just fish are just coming down in waves. Uh, they're all females. Uh, the males are still up above. Mm -hmm. um, did we catch a single male? Uh, maybe, but I, not many if we did, that's yeah. for sure. And if, if they were males, they were really big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these fish, uh, females are going up, they're spawning. Males are primarily staying up yet. Uh, and what we're doing is we're just targeting areas with a little bit of depth. Um, a, a place for them to get out of the little bit of current that there is. And, and then we're up on these shallow sand flats and it was just essentially just, you know, rifle through different baits, but fish everything slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, so often mm -hmm. in springtime, you're really maximizing that, that aggressive tendency of the walleyes, right? It's, it's ripping wraps or it's jigs and plastic snap pop, right? Yeah. Boy, they wanted nothing to do with that. Yeah. I spent more time just basically just rod high, reeling and an occasional just, yeah. that was about it. Yeah, for me it was, uh, you know, that hot skirt or just a plain quarter ounce jig had slow drags and I was just giving a little twitch while I was dragging and I would pause, reel down, give it another little, you know, twitch and slow drag and they would typically hit it on the pause, so that, that tells you. So um, very few fish yet remaining um, that are to spawn. Doesn't mean you're not gonna come out to the Econo River, the Peshtigo River and run into a pre-spawn fish, mm -hmm. but I think the vast majority of them have run, they're done, they're gonna head back to the lake. Uh, at some point, once they get back out to the lake, they're gonna turn that, uh, that they're rage gonna monster them, they're gonna get tendency aggressive. on, they're yeah. gonna get real aggressive. <laughs> uh, we're just not seeing that in the river yet. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking to still target some pre-spawn fish, you gotta go that way. Yeah, Long ways that way, you gotta go north. Uh, some of the, the rivers along the western shoreline of Green Bay, they're running colder, they're further up the bay, deeper water, the walleyes are coming out of deeper water. Mm -hmm. um, and those rivers might still give you a chance to catch up a pre-spawner. So it'd be like uh, Menominee and the Cedar yeah. would be the, the two yep. remaining choices. Yeah, and then the east shore is yet to go to of Green Bay. So, I mean, there's still places that a guy could go um, get, get some pre-spawn fish probably for another week and a half here. So um, if, if I was going to come over to this area, um, this river bite, I don't think is going to last much longer. So uh, today is the 6th. Uh, this show will air on the 13th. If I've got my math right, or excuse me, the 12th. Uh, if I was to come after the 12th, I would pretty much look away from the O'Connell River, um, the Peshtigo River, and I would concentrate on the bay. Yeah. I'd probably be trolling boards, go back to those you know, the smaller shad bodies, mm -hmm. uh, get a spread out, or if you want to cast, um, the rip and wraps rip and should wraps. still be really yeah. good for a couple more weeks as that water temperature kind of works yeah. its way up into the upper 40s and low 50s. It's that warm here in the river. Out in the bay, it's still low 40s. So uh, there's a whole window of time where the bay will warm and kind of get to that peak temperature where if you love catching them on the rip and wraps, that should still be an opportunity out there. Yeah. 
Yeah, you will get the thump once they come out of here angry. <laughs> they've, they've, they've run a marathon. Um, they're looking to, uh, to load back up after mm -hmm. they've made this journey up and down these rivers. You know, before in, in closing, this is just the fastest, flashiest spawn I've seen here on Green Bay. Usually it lasts weeks. Mm -hmm. This is just going to be condensed <laughs> real short. Yeah. Yeah, there was a crazy warm up. I mean, I, I, I've been fishing about four days over here. I've watched the water temperature warm 10 degrees, I think 11 degrees as of today. So yeah, it, it's warming up quick. Absolutely. So uh, on my end, you know, loving to fish the jig and plastics. Well, I think one of the keys to my success was just shortening everything way up. If it was a four inch bait, knock an inch off it. Uh, and then go to even more subtle baits. Um, I had some nice fish on a three and a quarter inch paddle tail with a with a paddle tail that it was smaller than my pinky fingernail. Yeah. I mean, it's just a real subtle bait and you could really see the difference. You'd fish the same cast over and over. You'd know you were too uh, fishing too big, too fast. You'd throw that uh, jig and hair out there or you'd throw a real small piece of plastic and whack boom and they crack the <laughs> stuffing out of it. Yeah. Which is kind of like that, that, that oddness, right? They're really lethargic. They want really slow moving baits. But when they hit it, they just come up top rope and yeah. boom. crunch on it. So. <laughs> Yeah. That's what we've got here from the uh, west shore of Green Bay, Ocano River. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this on location from PJ, Vic, and I. I think it's about time to go chase some crappies or something yeah. different. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little change up here. I, I'm right there with you. Um, crappies or trout or something along those lines. Yep. So uh, We're going to be on the road, of course. We've got another five more weeks of broadcast, I think, before we pull the plug. Uh, we'll be looking for some new species, and of course, we're always on the road headed somewhere. So thanks for watching. From PJ, Vic, and I, we'll see you next week. Thank you. In-depth outdoors on location, presented by Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters. Reed's offers the best service, best price, best advice on all your favorite ice fishing gear. Guaranteed. Find them online at reedsports.com.